realize what is already wrong already, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I uh, prepare. I prepared the slides. Uh, I first I got from Peter. I, I noticed is reused from last uh, semester. So does that mean the paper is reused, right? Maybe, maybe not. And then I modify something. What I modify is try to make sense of the topic. I try to link some of the points to our existing resources, uh, lecture slides, practical notes, put some linkage o- over there, or add on some slides, add on some questions for, uh, for you to, to take a look. All right, so I will go through this guy. We have two stuff. So I will talk a little bit about cloud computing today, right? Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know too much about cloud computing. It's just I learned something, I think, uh, quite for some time. I think five years. And then uh, full-time-wise, I'm teaching uh, this area in the cloud computing. And it's, very, it's quite relevant to what we are learning uh, in this course, right, in this course. <clears throat> so personally, I don't like tests. I don't like exam, right? Even though I'm very good at this exam, <laughs> but I still don't like it. Yeah, even I think one year ago, uh, you know, sometimes I got nightmare. <laughs> uh, so what happened is I was sitting there, uh, sitting for some exam. Then you know the question, look at the questions, you look at your own answer, you know you are going to fail. <laughs> and I look at your watch, it's still got some time. <laughs> so you walk around, right? And then tap on some web service, uh, calling to SOC, cannot get the, the response back. Calling the web service is restful, still cannot get. And then you cannot do anything. Just sit there, and then you feel very, very nervous. Right? <laughs> and then you wake up, all right? So nervous is not, not a bad thing. Now. It's a help us to wake up, whether it's in a dream, sweet dream, or night, uh, night, uh, night one, <laughs> or in the everyday life. Yeah, it's also, uh, even if we think we're living in the daytime, uh, we are waking up, but actually, you know, it's a question mark. Are we really waking up? Right? It may not be. We are conditioned, right? right? Conditioned is such a way, consider the, the so-called virtual reality as a reality. It's not reality. Uh, this is not an answer from religious, not only from religious leaders, but also from top uh, scientists nowadays. You go to YouTube, you will be able to search. Right? Okay, so, uh, revision, uh, so slides, right? So, uh, service oriented, right? Service oriented. So basically, these keywords is about. Uh, uh, the service. So, in this module, we cover two types of service. Uh, one is uh, SOP service, SOP. Another one is uh, RESTful, right? So a lot of comparison over there. Uh, but but it seems that the one thing about SOP service uh, more is for transaction based, right? You have a payment transaction. You have a so you, you may have a soft service over there. For RESTful, um, more focus on the resource, like food, we have resource, uh, like uh, the movie, right? So these kind of things. And then RESTful, right? Both SOP and RESTful are based on HTTP, right? So as what we discovered so far, uh, RESTful take full advantage of HTTP. For example, when you look at the, the SOC, right, basically you, have, you most likely will use HTTP POST. Right? You have a SIS and put XMS, which is a SOC message inside the, 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 the SOC, the, the HTTP. So it's a POST, POST uh, mainly. So where is for, for HTTP, uh, for REST for service, we make full advantage of this HTTP. So we use HTTP GET, HTTP PUT, HTTP uh, HTTP what, right? But there is one mistake I have made 
is right okay pos is used to create yeah so forget about the mistake no need to repeat the mistake I know it, it was a mistake and they, uh, at that time um, when I prepared the rest for uh, the topic ABC I followed tutorial points the tutorial points is, is fantastic but he, this guy got a mistake o- over there uh, so my sample everything I created access database uh, where you create a food uh, in this case movie is it Yours, yours is movies. Yours is food. Uh, the example is what? Movie. Tools, right? So create tools which you use post method. Yeah. yeah. So you must tell your client, hello, <laughs> the client, when you go, go there, you must post. Okay. So this is a mistake. I double check this uh, stuff. I will show you later. Right. So this is a correct. Yeah. This is a correct. Post to create. The other words, put is to update. So if you want to expose the web API to the user, of course it's HTTP, right? So the, the client, other application, if you want to create, uh, in your case is food, right? Or food, or category, whatever. Create a, a resource, they post, if you update, there is so rest for service have um uh, take full advantage of the HTTP existing HTTP uh, vehicles uh, or protocols. Uh, whereas for the for the for the SOC, right, we mainly focus on the post and put the XML in the HTTP body. So service oriented uh, approach. Service oriented approach. Uh, okay, so uh, self-contained software module. So uh, when you create uh, the web service, right? So basically, uh, in your you wait after you create the the, the in the, uh, your assignment after you create the uh, service called food, right? So in your own application, you can make use of this uh, self-contained software module. Or, or we call, you can call it a component, right? In your own application. At the same time, you can expose this uh, self-contained software module or this component to other applications. They can call you also. Uh, call you also. Right? So, uh, can be reused. And this invocation, when you call the web service, is through the network such as the internet. So here, the, what they talk about is because nowadays the internet is there, right? And HTTP is there. So you don't have to... Uh, so that's why uh, when you invoke the web service, this module, so basically go to HTTP or HTTPS. But actually, theoretically, they can go through any network, not necessarily the, the internet. It's just, just because the internet, right, this infrastructure is there, Right, so uh, we tap on this, but not confined to this internet. Right. Mm. So it's distributed, right, so these are the things. Okay, so this is the things. So the examination question will ask you, uh, what is SOA? So of course this is uh, related to SOC, right? In the RESTful, uh, the SOA is slightly different, right? So there are three nodes. So you are, when you answer this question, right, you don't have to draw this uh, complex picture like that, right? Or three D, two D. Just one dot, one dot, one dot, right? Three dots. So the three dots you can call dots, or you can call node. These are three node, right? Three node. Behind the thing, all of the three nodes are interconnected through the network. In this case, mainly we talk about internet or the cloud, right? So these three nodes. So what are these three nodes? Right, one node is your service. Uh, where is this? A service provider, right? Service provider. So you are someone to uh, your service provider is 
your food, uh, your food service provider, right? Allow user to, to see what are the popular food you have, right? Uh, so this is a service provider. And then uh, this is a service client, right? So uh, some of us are using web client, right? Some of us are using uh, what? Uh, Android, Android mobile, right? So this is basically is a client, right? So these are the last time we talked about client server, client server architecture. So basically it's like that. Right? So these are the two nodes. Two nodes. Uh, these two nodes finding basically meaning uh, you are going to use this particular service provider, right? So for example, everyone provides a full service provider, right? So in this for this particular service client, this Android application, I want to use this food service at this URL, and at this URI, right? So then you, you can say you find this, uh, find this. So let's take a look at these uh, third nodes, right? Third node. Another node is this kind of service registry over here. So where is the service, what is the role played by this service registry? Uh, after you create a web service, right? For example, not many people know this service hosted at this uh, node, right? So you can publish this information to this guy, right? So you call service registry uh, or service directory. Yeah, it's up to you uh, what you want to call. It can be, can you, if you like, can be directory, right? And then you look at the, so this is a place for service provider to publish the service information. So the real service may still be hosted over here. So what they publish is publish the, the, the say I, I, I have this web service, sort of this, this information, just publish this information, like a market and vote publish over here, right? So I will publish, let's you move to the, this node, like service client, right? This is a mobile application. So in your mobile application, you want to plug in some of the service o over there. And then you can search Google, you can, you can ask your friends what other service you have. Alternatively, uh, you can go to this directory, service directory, to look for this uh, particular service you are looking for. Right? So this is the role so-called provided by the service directory or service registry. A uh, layman term, you can call it uh, yellow page. Yep, yellow page. Right. Yellow page. But in the RESTful, right, so I think uh, officially we haven't seen this uh, registry. Maybe in the future it will come out because you have so many web service, web API over there, right? So uh, how, y if you are the service provider, right, unless you are super, like the, you, you are Microsoft, Amazon, if you are the uh, Bluemix, IBM, uh, if you are Amazon uh, or, or Google application engine, so you are the big name, so people come to you, already know you have a lot of service, so you don't really need to uh, publish it to other service registry, right? But for some service, people don't know, right? Uh, they, they may have this role to play. But in the rest of all, we haven't seen this picture come out yet, right? So uh, when you talk about SOA, uh, the question is so basically, if the question is where phrase, so we are talking about this uh, simple object access protocol, simple object access, so web service, right? So for us, uh, you look at what we did, right? What is SOAP or RESTful web service? So basically this is a class, right? And then we have see, this kind of annotation, right? Annotation, annotation, right? To expose the public method of this class to the web. So SOAP got their, got their annotation like at web method. Uh, RESTful, you put a, at the path, at the, at the consume, see? At the produce, right? At the path, right? At the, let's say this kind of annotation to wrap up the class, the public, the method, public method of this class to the web as a rest for service. So it's just a different way of annotation, right? Annotation. And then uh, what do we learn? This class actually is 
may, may or may not come from the entity or the table in your database. So, uh, one guy, okay, so let, let's just focus on this. So, this is SO8, simple uh, service oriented architecture, right? Okay. Any questions about this? So, yeah, good question. <laughs> good question. Yeah. So let me rephrase the question because I don't have an answer. <laughs> right. So the so the soap, right? <clears throat> Let's uh, just shift in a little bit about this. Right. So the. So if you, uh, let's say from client per perspective, right? I come to you, uh, come to the yellow page, come to the visual tray, say I, I'm looking for the global weather service, right? right? So I just, this is my question, right? Fine, let's search for the particular question, right? Then this guy told me, okay, this is the an answer, right? So when you give me the answer, <laughs> What answer you, 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 you may like to give to me? So that, based on your answer, I will be able to bind to that service provider. Right? This is the Global Weather Service. He published some information over here. Then I say, hey, hello, I'm looking for Global Weather Service. So you will tell me. So based on what you tell me, I will be able to call this, I know how to call this service provider, right? So uh, you are right, so you are talking about WSDL. Yeah, so possibly, so the question is, let's say if you, I, 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 I come here, say I want to search global weather service, right? You tell me the answer. So the question is, is this WSDL you, you give to me? Or... Or, because WSDL actually is, is very important for the service client, right? Because everything over here, oh, where you get, let's say, food, right? You go to the food from the MySQL, and then in this class, you use annotation to expose the method to the, all of the things. But all of this, the things is, is, a, is, a, is black box. For the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the client. The client don't care about all of the details. The client only, tell, only know how to call this web service. So in, the, in, in case of the SOAP, right, so the WSDL come to the picture, right? WSDL come to the picture. So let's uh, just uh, get an example. For example, uh, global weather, right? So I know this endpoint already. I know the WSDL already, right? Right? I know this WSDL file will work already, right? So inside the WSDL file, right, you are telling me uh, when you call this uh, get weather, right? For example, you need to pass me uh, two parameters. One is the city name, the type is stream. Uh, one is the country name. Uh, so these two parameters need to pass to me. And based on this XML, but uh, if this XML um, is correct, right? Let's say uh, maximum occurs equal to one. That means you cannot pass me two city names when I call. Let's say I call you, call this 
Uh, what's the weather uh, in Singapore, Singapore, for example? Right? So what I'm going to forget the weather. So basically I type city name, I type country name, right? So there you give me the weather condition uh, come back. So this is here, right? Here is this part. City name. So you cannot pass two city name, right? And also, it's a maximum. A minimum occurs equal to zero. If this piece of this WST here, right, that means if I don't pass this name, it's okay, right? So that means this guy is option, right? But actually, we think twice, may not be, right? So it's the case for country name. Can only pass one. Uh, the minimum of course equal to zero. That means if you don't pass me country name, also okay. <laughs> right? Based on this WSDF bar. So, from what we have tried before, we realize uh, probably what they really mean is minimum of course equal to one, uh, minimum, a uh, maximum of course to one. That means when you pass this guy, this prep, or this method, cross the web, right? So you need to pass two parameters to me. To this web service provider, uh, uh, yeah, uh, one and on, only one, right? It means this parameter, right? When translate to the class, whatever says is become mandatory, right? Mandatory, right? Mandatory. So these are the things, right? So now back to your question over here. So. From the service client perspective, what I need to consume this service, pro service right, is the WSDFR, right, WSDFR. So are you going to give me the WSDFR? Choice number one, right? Choice number two, just give me the URL to the WSDFR, right? right? And then I go to this particular WSDFR, I got it. So the WSDFR may, may be located over here may be located over here. Right? So in the SOA, they kind of not very sure. It, 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 it's not inside this. It's, it's, it's all right. right. So they never say over here or over here. But end of the day, you will be able to get the WSDF. So if this guy can pass WSDF file to you, you go to the WSDF file. If they don't pass WSDF file to you, they will pass you the URI, right? To the WSDF file. And so end of the day, Probably you will get a WSDF file from, from here. But the service provider got a choice. So my service, global weather, is hosted over here. But my WSDF file could be hosted somewhere else. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. So if the WSDF file, after you got it, right? So in this case, this. WSDF file is located over here. The web service also is hosted over here. In this case, it's at the same place. So what if the WSDF file is located over here, right? And the web service is located somewhere else. And then, from the perspective of this client, right, then where are you going to call? What's the end point for the real web service? WSDA is a documentation to help you to consume, how to consume, how to call. Oh, get a weather, you got two parameters, uh, these are the mandatory. But where is it? The end point, right, of this WSDA, right, so, of this web service, right. So if we browse all the way down, right, you will notice, right, you will see HTTP address, Location, right? SMX, right? So they will, in the WTF file, they will tell you where is the end point of this sub web service located. Could be the same host as this WTF file itself, could be in different places. It doesn't matter, right? They will, from WTF file, basically you will know. Uh, how to consume this particular web service. So I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I, uh, I think I need to put this guy over here. 
so to take a look at uh, this guy, right, uh, I, I think in the, in the lecture when we explain things, right, so Right. So this is an example over there. So can you, can you go to this uh, stop web service? Okay, you consume this web service. Take a look at what is the garbage here over there. So they, uh, this part you just know this is a rich, uh, this is a rich history. So uh, to answer your question, right? So end of the day, after you find from this guy, which is a yellow page. So what you really need is the WSTL file or the endpoint to the WSTL file. So in the richest tree wise, they can give you WSTL file straight away or give you the endpoint to this URL, to this WSTL file, right? Once you go to this WSTL file, this XML file, uh, web service description language, you are able to know how to invoke this web, ser web service. So I hope when you do revision, play with this web service and uh, to see the swap in picture, uh, it will be good to uh, plug in this swap UI and then take a look when you call this web service through HTTP, internet, right? Swap UI, you just take this guy as a, as a service client, right? It's just a client, right? When you call this web service, uh, they, this will help you to understand this uh, uh, kind of so uh, use of right project name or no so you just put these things over there okay uh, because just now we, I tell this web service client I say this is a WSTL file to this uh, global weather service and then they track this WSTL file from uh, somewhere, right? Get. And then they pick up, oh, you have two web methods over there. One is get city, uh, get back by country. So if we map to the class, basically this class, for example, but this is not written in Java, this is written in C sharp. So you have some annotation put in front of these two web methods, which will be exposed to the C. You have two methods over there, right? So if we take a look at the get weather, so what we are going to do, we put it in the shop, right? Uh, so this is Singapore, and this is Singapore, right? So what method we are using to send this shop message over shop, this re shop request to the web service? Uh, what do you think? What is the HTTP method we use to send this top message over to this uh, service provider? What method? What method? HTTP get, HTTP post? Nope. So why you say is HTTP get? Because uh, because we are get this resource, right? We are get this data. So if you, from the RESTful perspective, yes, you are using get, right? But you realize this. Just now we say, <coughs> RESTful service, right? Make a full advantage of HTTP. HTTP get, post, put, and so on and so forth. But for SOAP, mainly they are using post. Yeah, but you look from the perspective of the RESTful service, right? So you have weather information at this resource, which is Singapore, Singapore resource, or whatever resource, right? Or you have this, right? So I get this resource. So is HTTP get? Yes, you are right. Yeah, you are right. So um, in the exam, right? So uh, please take a look uh, what context we are talking about. Right. So that means your answer is, is correct in this perspective. But on the other hand, uh, we see the context, right? You see, this is SOP. This is SOP. You have SOP envelope, SOP body, SOP header, right? Uh, this is SOP response come back to us. Or SOP envelope, or SOP body, uh, no header, right? So this is SOP. 
Yeah, this is a shop. Because when you call RESTful, right, so far, what we have tried so far is the browser just the path to the resource, right, and then you, you manipulate some methods, there are some parameters. Some parameters is query string, some parameter is, uh, is in the template, in the URI, right, template, slash something, right, so we don't see this. This only appears in the shop, right, so as name suggests, it's called shop, shop, right, so what method we are using? Anybody? You want to send this SOP request to this SOP service, right? Let's make it clear. SOP service, SOP request to this SOP service, right? We go to HTTP also. So the SOP request will go all the way to the provider. So in other words, it's go to HTTP, right? So what method we are using HTTP? So it's not get. If it's restful, yes. But now it's soft, so we are, what method we are using, right, you took a look at over here. That is the question. So the soft message you see over here is just a message, right? So in this case, you want to, for us to send this soft message over, because that's something in the rest, right? When you say get the information, what I pass to you, right, is just a couple of query string, right? Query string or parameters, just as it is, what equal to what, what equal to what, what equal to what. This, in the RESTful where we do this, is like that, right? But we never, in the RESTful, we never, in our request, we never put this XML, right? Kind of things, right? <coughs> yeah. Even in the RESTful, if you have this data, not a XML, but in JSON, right? Uh, you still cannot use it, get. You st either you use post or put, because you are kind of, create something or modify some resource already. You are not getting the resource. If you get the resource, that tell you what the resource. Tell you some parameters you will give to me, like the, our assignment tool, or what is this food, right? I say this food, uh, rating equals to, to two, <laughs> right, for example. Full stop, right? So this is, uh, uh, I think, <coughs> I put this uh, sub UI over there, right? So, and then, uh, you can make some when you do the revision I hope you I think this is a good tool to take a look at uh, this So no, I, I don't do any formatting, okay? So, uh, yeah, just like, it, like this, right? So you will play around, you will see how the soft edit, right? So based on this, uh, just a couple of questions uh, uh, to take a look. In the soft, right? In the soft, right? This soft, right? So they got a header, right? They got header. They got sub body. I'm not talking about HTTP body, right? You got a sub header, sub body, right? So which of the following following is um, mentor mentor trick, right? Uh, let's put it in the context because this can confuse, right? So this we are we are talking about soft message, not talk about HTTP or something else. If it, something else, the answer is different, totally different, right? Totally di different. Main three, right? Yeah. So let me move to here. You take a look. So in the soft, right? So this is this is the HTTP packet. This is HTTP header, method post. Then this is a sub request. We put it in XML format. So you have envelope, you have head, you have body, right? So response similar envelope head body, right? So which one is 
uh, header, subheader is optional, or subbody is optional. Right? Header, right? Is it? Header is optional. You see over here, the sub response, right? You have a sub envelope, you have this guy over there, uh, body, body, right? Over there. So you don't have header. Uh, another question, right? Uh, you want not to consume too much resource. I just had another question over here, right? For example, uh, the sub message, right, has been exchanged between the uh, service provider, service, and then the service client. They go through something. So do you think this kind of soft message, right? Do you, what do you think? Where the... Uh, I, I just end up half phrase, uh, sorry. Uh. Do you think the firewall... Okay, the firewall, right? Do you think the firewall will block block the SOP message. So, uh, just, just now exchange, right? So, just now the SOP UI, I'm here, I'm within the SP premise, right? So, HTTP packet go all the way from this SP premise, you know there's a firewall somewhere uh, before we go to the internet, right? So, the firewall say, hey, hello, <laughs> where are you going? I say, okay, go. Well, you are not okay. Right? So when the soft request, this says go all the way, come to the endpoint as this global weather service, right? So you are hosting in this environment, so in front of you, you may have a firewall also. So the firewall will check, hello, stop message, is that okay now? Can you go through, right? So this is, so they, they are kind of, uh, this uh, uh, question, right? From our experience, uh, there's no such thing, right? Uh, we're not blocked, right? And then, so why we're not blocked? Because you say, oh, your sub envelope does not contain virus. Right? Oh, you, you are, your header is optional, all right? No. So why? Why the firewall does not block? So I, 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 I do splash, you will know. This is one. This is another one. So this sub request message. This is a HTTP header. So this is HTTP header. The sub message is over here, right? The sub message is over here. So once go to the firewall, is basically this is HTTP packet, right? So, of course, HTTP, the firewall will not block, right? So, this, when you play with this, you will see these points. So, in the case, when the response comes back, is within this HTTP header, inside HTTP header is this guy, right? So, the points over here is, what do we, I don't know whether I mentioned this before. Basically, this, this SOP, right? It's basically, is writing on HTTP. Right. So the whole whole stuff about this module, right, is about HTTP. Or last time HTTP, right, invented or designed for such a way to exchange the HTML file. So in other words, HTTP is uh, I'm I'm not a web service client. You are not a web service provider. I'm just simply a browser. You are simply a web server. So HTTP is used for exchange the, the HTML, right? I ask something, you give me a web page. So HTTP is designed for this way. Right? So what we learn in this module, right. oh, you can put a SOP. What is SOP? A SOP is just XML. All right? Oh, you can put a JSO or whatever it is. Uh, in the RESTful, when you see the browser over there, right, we, we have a hard time, right, had a hard time to get this done. So what, what, what does that mean? When you say browser, uh, localhost, blah, blah, and then you have an uh, application path, and then followed by your class, and followed by the resource tools. You got this JSON display for you. What does that mean? 
you simply the in, inside HTTP, what you receive from HTTP is a JSON string, right? Containing food, uh, what was this tools, right? To 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 your kids contain food, 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 right? So what we learn in this module is basically what you can contain in this HTTP or HTTPS. The HTTP is already there, right? Use in the first place is for exchange HTML page, right? And then someone smarter than us, <laughs> you oh, can put something else, right? So it, it, it sounds like you, you, you invent this for, for, for HTML, water bottle, right? And then someone say, how about juice, <laughs> right? Soap. <laughs> and then someone say, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. And someone say, oh, it's up to you, right? And then so in the first, from all across the course, right? Yeah, so what? Writing on this. And then so nowadays the government say Internet of Things. <laughs> so, what things? <laughs> that, that, that's exactly the question. What things you put in the HTTP packet? Right? Could it be, I don't know, like, could it be just a question mark? That's a question mark. That's a question mark. Open up all the possibility. <laughs> right? What can you put in HTTP? Don't know. Question mark. Right? Question mark. Question mark. Yeah, so I think this tool is good for you to play around with this existing one and then uh, kind of things, right? So I give you uh, in the early stage, I give you the soft client, uh, not only in browser, I give you the, the Android mobile to call the soft through this, uh, what is this? Android mobile, right? The soft, uh, I think the temperature conversion. The case study, part of you were already, right? Uh, so some of us try, some of us show the, see the demo, but you, you see the points, right? You, you see the points. Okay? Yeah, so this is clear. Yeah, before we take a break, let's move on to... So this will not be tested, but it's important to know, so that's why I add it over there, over here. Uh, will not be tested, right? So, so your web service will be hosted somewhere in one of the things over there, right? So, uh, so many many requests come to your place. So, and then all of the requests looks like handled concurrently at the one time. So, basically, they may have multiple thread, one thread to handle one request, one thread to handle one request services. Right? So in other words, your food rest for service, it was hosted on Glassfish, is kind of your application. So what happened behind the scene, uh, could, it, could it be like that, right? But one problem of this is, if one thread got a problem, they will affect the other thread, because they are working in the, in the same process space. So the boundary is not is, is in the same room, right? So this multi-thread, multi uh, this is a thread, uh, architecture for the Android. So in the example, we see uh, how one thread can come to the place interacting with the user GUI. Another thread uh, can invoke with the service with, or, or some tasks which take a long time or in the background, right? And then how these two threads can communicate with each other where the core pack can come to place, right? So I think we have kind of explored these two sides, right? Uh, uh, concurrent, uh, concurrent stuff. Okay. So uh, I think before we take a break, right? We take a look at these slides, right? Uh, which which of the following is not a foundation for web service? A, B, C, D. HTML, right? B, 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 right? B, right? But without HTML, HTTP may not come to the picture. <laughs> so we must be grateful to this HTML uh, so that this HTTP is invented in the, fir in the, in the, in the first place. And then some smart guy say, uh, HTTP can be used for something else. Don't know, like, question mark. Right? Just question mark. Good enough, right? <laughs> so, question mark is good, right? So, 
And then tomorrow we wake up, you know, it was something to do, right? Process, right? <laughs> Continuously. So, uh, HTTP definitely is the foundation for web service. Uh, even though it's not invented for XML SOAP exchange since it's for HTML, but HTTP is the foundation. You tap on these vehicles. A SOAP is ready or HTTP. And if you take a look at the SOAP, right? Actually, it is XML, right? XML. And then from this question, right, you more or less you will be able to see one point, right? So this web service, right, right. So web service, this so-called technology, right, allows, right, allows, right. So the keyword is different, right? Different, different applications, right? To talk to each other, right? And then the point is, the keywords is called, this word is difficult to, to type in interoperability. Yeah, so... Yep. No matter, let's say your Android application, you can call the software web service. Your Android application, you can call the response service. Your uh, your 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 Android your what jQuery? Right? <laughs> hey, I have a supervisor, right? He likes to. He, part of her duty, he has to sit in the classroom, right? Observe my teaching. And then uh, he, in the end, uh, he feedback back to me. See. When you teach, uh, it's like you are arguing, scolding others. <laughs> you are fighting with someone. <laughs> and then, I, I, at the time, I don't understand because I say this is a kind of passion, right? It's packaging HTTP. <laughs> you don't know. And then, you know, this, this guy, right? This one, right? Got this video, this, right? And then when I watch the video, and then I play very, very fast, right? <laughs> because this noise is quite fast, so you don't, no points to, to listen. Just play very, very fast. I, I listen to the pitch up and down. It is like a, like a, this uh, auntie <laughs> arguing with each other, right? So I think it's uh, kind of a thing I need to improve uh, in the rest of my life. Uh, I don't know how long, right? So maybe 10 years, maybe 20 years, maybe another 50 years. <laughs> 50 years, I will be 101. <laughs> so hopefully I can see, see you at the time, right? Yeah. So, okay, back to the points. So, distracted just now. <laughs> Sorry, where is the point? Where is the point? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so you are right. So, in your case, you are using jQuery uh, kind of things, web. So, you, you see the reality is web service, whether it's soft, whether it's restful, they allow different applications to talk to each, each other. And then we do show respect to the difference. You do the way you like you used to be. I do the way I like to be. You are Windows, I'm Unix, you are Java, I'm C Sharp, you are PHP, you are Python, so all those things can be different. But when they make use of this web service technology, they allow the different applications, right, no matter how different, what difference, to communicate, to talk to each other, right? So why? Because they use the HTTP, why? Because they use XML, why? Because they use stop, right? So all of this when they exchange the message, right, to HTTP, no matter what you are doing, I'm, what I'm doing, right, different system, we understand HTTP protocol. We understand XML, got some tag, something added, right? <laughs> the soft basically is XML, or, or envelope header is optional, right? So because of this, we see very clearly these uh, things. And in the reality, you look at the uh, Singapore portal, you see them, Right, they integrate different ministers, different things together. As a citizen, easily then you come to this portal, you will be able to go to different stuff you already integrated. Uh, what, from what I know, this project, the first attempt, is not successful because the web service technology at that time is not mature yet, allowed to integrate the different systems. And now this, there is another project, is Clinic 1, Clinic 2, Hospital 1, Hospital 2. If I'm a patient, you have the record over here, like iPad, iPhone, will be synchronized all over the places. So behind the scene, they are using web service, RESTful or SOAP, to integrate different applications together. And the business process is integrated. 
Okay, that's most important from business perspective. All right? And then from Expedia, they have nothing, they have everything. <laughs> so when you have nothing, nothing. Expedia, no hotel, <laughs> no airline. <laughs> right? uh, they, they, they do have this service which integrates all over the places and interoperability. I just think. Okay. Uh, mandatory, optional, right? So, which of four? Uh, I think it's a four day, right? The four day. They don't have a root, they don't have a tailor. They have four day and a header, right? So, the, it's something we did discuss before, right? And this part, I, I made the mistake for at least two or three years. How this question? <laughs> Until one day my student tells me, why well, you say it's not correct? <laughs> right. Because I come from this TCP packet, IP packet, and then move to the HTTP packet. All the packet are, body is optional. You must have a header. <laughs> right. So when I come to SOP, when I learn SOP, right, I say, it should be the same. <laughs> right. Alamo, it's different. Right. So I, I keep this uh, kind of <laughs> error since uh, for a long time. Alamo, shame, shame, shame. Today, okay, when I teach you guys, uh, this is a mistake. Push to create new one. Okay. Yeah, I will show you example. The industry uh, response service to see what they are doing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what are the HTTP request methods? Uh, what are the HTTP request methods for? I think it's not. Uh, I think it's something different. Is it? The question is not asking what the request method. We know what are the request method, right? It's basically, these are the couple of things. And then, so what is this uh, for, right? What is the request method for? Whether you need to get or push or put or, or something hit, right? So what is this request method for, right? I think it's a little bit related to the rest for service already, right? So when you say, come to your system, your slash localhost, followed by phone number, followed by your path, first path is application path, I follow by your class, that path, right, to the resource, right? So the URL fix, let's fix this, right? And then I say HTTP get means what? And the HTTP put means what? HTTP post means what, right? HTTP hit means what? So this, all of the methods is indication of the action, right? When it's applied to this resource at this particular URI, in your case, food, in your case, food, right? So I say, what do you mean by get this URI? Same URI. Why do you mean you get a uh, push? It's great, right? So this, I think, this is an indication. Uh, indication. Yeah. So you you like because I put a link over here. Yeah, you can try more quiz over here. So this quiz actually we haven't got time to to take a look. So it will link you to the home page. There, you, 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 you go down a little bit, right? Uh, there is uh, stuff over here, right? So let's complete this guy. Uh, so here, got an error. Continuously uh, monitor the uptime of a web server. Right. A, right? Uh, A can be done, and then uh, because there are the keywords over here continuously, that means what is a more gracious way <laughs> to send a request to the server? But actually, I don't request anything. Actually, I just say if you can give me a response, means you are you okay? Yeah. And then get cat. And then better one is hit. Yeah, the hit. So. Hit means I send this to the same resource at this URI uh, slash 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 food. Right? So if it's a head, you will give me the HD head. So sort of things. Head. Right? So the body part uh, may you, you will not come to me. Right? Uh, so uh, so the problem is continuously monitor this, right? So we say head may be bad. You ping cannot. You ping is just mean this server is up. 
does not mean the service is running. So you request a particular resource over there, and say the URI, then you will know that that, that, that that service is running. But you don't want to chop, uh, create a lot of workload on the server side because you are monitoring, because you continue to monitor maybe every five minutes or four minutes, depends on this. And then, and then uh, also is important for the client perspective because if you request here, I mean, they will give you less stuff, right? So your memory, your stuff, and your client side uh, also good for the good for the what? Good for the client, right? Because you you receive less, so consume less memory or variable memory, whatever things, right? Especially for the device. So this question is a little bit tricky, right? Uh, then. Uh, what? We should fully describe more in which software developer does not care too much about how the processing is performed. So in other words, when, we, and I, when I call your web service at this URI, blah, blah, slash foo, right? I don't care too much about how you implement it. Java, what class, right? And then what annotation are you using? <laughs> what container <laughs> class fish? Uh, juicy. <laughs> All right. So all of the questions uh, will not be asked by the client, right? Uh, so you don't care too much about how this, let's say, processing, this web service is performed, implemented. Instead, only focus on provide valid inputs then so that you can get the resource, uh, get the task done, uh, result, get the expected result, right? So, uh, so this is called black box, right? Yeah, kind of black, black, black box. Yeah, you had, you had, yeah, black box. So they, 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 I think they will give you the answer. You try, you may do revision, you will know. So you are going to Google suggestion service, right? Have you tried the Google suggestion service, right? So um, the suggestion service is HTTP get the resource until here. And then you provide similar to your stuff uh, some parameters so they will process a user result back, right? So which URL is not correct? Who knows, right? You must try it, then you will know, right? So just ignore. <laughs> if you happen to know, then it should be this guy. Is it? Right? Right? This is not correct, right? Because if you, if I call your food, right? If I give you parameters, you query string, then I must give you question mark after the URL to slash food, slash tools, right? Right? Or in the template is, is slash something in the template, right? So you don't have this name value pair put here, right? So this guy is not correct. The rest looks okay. Google suggestion service. Uh, so, uh, there one more, is it? Okay. So, this is API to worldweatheronline.com, right? Free version one, right? So, in your case, if you want to implement your web service, in this case, assignment to the food, right? So, you want to have this version number in the path, right? So, where are you going to put it? Oh, you have a class, right? On top of the class, there is an annotation called what? Pub, right? At the pub, right? So at the pub, currently is bracket, double quote, food or tools. So you found a, instead of tools, you say slash version one, slash tools, something like that. So you can put the version number, versioning uh, at that level, annotation level. And then you know your API uh, will involve, will change. So once you change, then later you have version 2, so you can still support the version 1 client, right? So you see, the, this is how the, the works. So they have a free version, and then, of course, they can have a premium version. So normally, this is how the web service uh, model works, right? So uh, there's a missing part in our assignment, in our teaching, which is uh, basically the security part, you need to provide the API key before you can do it. So this part is missing, but you can take a case, like this as a case study, 
you will know, right? So every, you, you need to put the API key. API key is, where is API key? Stored in the HTTP header, stored in the HTTP body, stored in the cookie, needs to be sent for the first HTTP request. So this D is not correct. D is not correct. So what this D trying to say is, okay, you are the free, well, uh, this URI, right? Slash what? Weather, right? Real time weather, right? So I come to your portal, subscribe this service, so you give me the API key. My quality is API key. Whether I pay or not pay is another story. So I send the first request to you. In my request, uh, uh, this is a request which you cannot see, right? Then I provide by May my API key to you. So you give me the response already, the weather, okay? So this guy say, only first time. That means if I send another request to you, ask for the weather condition, no need to give you API key, right? So this look like not correct. So in other words, API key need to be sent in every request, even from the same client. So why it is so? Uh, stateless, right? Security, stateless, right? Uh, security, yeah, of course it must API key. And then uh, you say, hey, hello, what service? You know the first time when I call you, I give you the API key, right? Can you, can you save my API key? <laughs> so for my subsequent request, I no need to provide the API key for you. You know, if there's a case that uh, you, you create a lot additional workload on, the, on your rest for service side, you must have a memory to, to store all this guy from this client, already give me the API key in the first request, so subsequent request, no, no need. And then you, I'm not the only client like, to call you. Like. So for your client, you call me, oh, you first time give the API key, I store for you, so subsequent one, you no need to, to stay, right? But you know the rest for service, for example, is stateless, right? No need, the, the server side should ever request as a fresh request. They never hold, store the previous request information. So API key, for example, this is an example to highlight to you this so-called stateless. And then you can scale. Once you are stateless, you can scale up. Right? You can scale up. <laughs> so what is my target in my rest of my life? Right? So move to stateless. So every time I meet you, uh, oh, hello, hello, my name is Mr. G. <laughs> so your name? <laughs> yeah. Eating. Yeah. So every time I uh, is fresh. So, because this is good, because what, what, whatever you do good to me, I can't, cannot remember. Whatever you score me, I cannot remember. <laughs> but in the reality, you see, oh, Alama, Mr. G, uh, you, you just uh, one minus y equal to zero already. Uh. But still good. You know why? Because nowadays, people, because of the less patient, uh, more materialized, they keep the status of the grudges more. So if I clear everything, every fresh, right? This is good. So this is my target in the rest of my life. Right? <laughs> so, yeah, so very, very, very important. Now, right? So when you meet your wife, oh, Alma, hello, flower. <laughs> oh, this girl is really pretty. <laughs> is this good? I think it's good. Be grateful. Wow. <laughs> Everybody can remember the first time you meet your girlfriend, now it's your wife, right? For, for example, oh, fresh. I can't remember whatever happened before. You scold me. <laughs> I really cannot remember. You, you help me to remember. What's the camera, right? Give me API key, okay? Right? So, kind of things, right? so this is a lot, a lot of uh, story we can learn from this uh, stateless uh, service, right? And then you can scale up. In other words, you are more wise, more healthy, Right? right, so but of course you may get confused <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. You ask that, uh, you ask question. You say don't know question mark. I don't know. Right. So these are the very interesting questions I have compiled for uh, many uh, couple of years. Right. So I hope it's useful for you to do the revision. I think it's more than revision already. Right. So let's take a quick break. Right, so we'll, I will try to finish at a night before night, so that we have, if you have any questions about assignment, right? So feel free to ask me the same question as you asked before, right? <laughs> because I'm stateless, right? So I don't know what question you asked last time, right? Class fish, 
uh, the, the, the MySQL library need to put in the lib or whatever. I, I, I can't remember. Right? But the thing is, what can I remember? That's a key question. Right? 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 Yeah.
So the purpose of revision is not only give you the format, MCQ, uh, 10 questions, and they have four uh, short uh, structure questions, right? So and then the topic will be here, right, more or less. So when I go through the topic, I try to highlight, help you to understand, uh, have a better picture of the topic. So when you do revision, you, you can have less, uh, spend less time. And then uh, when you work on your assignment too, uh, hopefully what you are doing can help you to visualize uh, the topic we are covering over here. Right? So, a service, they have a quality of service. So, this is very important in the sense when we are creating our own uh, design, build, implement of our own web service. So, we will think about uh, accessibility, whether it's available, uh, and then the security part, how can we make sure they can scale up, make it scalable. <coughs> uh, on the other hand, uh, if you are the service client, Right? When you are think of uh, subscribe available services from service provider, so they do have a service level agreement with you. So uh, all of these things will be listed over there right, for you to take a look. So. so the UNTEC is good. So the middleware, the middleware is something in the middle. So uh, again, this. For example, from the service provider, service client perspective, right? So everything, the HTTP, the network underlying layers, all of the things can become transparent, right? So when you invoke the web service remotely across the internet, go to HTTP, right? So the rest of the things become transparent. So this is uh, the, where the middleware will come to the picture to, to serve this purpose. <coughs> Is so, so that sometimes uh, we have a metaphor, say middleware is like a glue, right? So, so it's like a glue since uh, middleware acting as a so-called glue, right? Glue means you can glue, <laughs> right? Help you to glue, help you to integrate. Because you don't have to worry too much about HTTP, network, all of the things, right? So play this way. So, client server model is still an uh, important model over there, right? Uh, but but the, the scalability also could be an issue if we uh, always we rely on only on client server model, right? Uh, so, maybe you have a whole something called a pushing, right? Pushing mode, pushing. So, in other words, uh, everybody can, like a client, you can send a request to the service to get a sys. Get a food, get a food, get a food, right? Uh, so alternatively, uh, if I got some new food, whatever it is, I will push to you, right? Notify you, right? So that you don't have to keep in pulling, sending requests to me. So request and response, so basically it's a pulling mode, right? So the client side is always pulling request response. So the server side can, can alternatively can push it pushing the result. Right. So this in certain situation, uh, this may help your system to scale up. Right. So, so when you invoke a RESTful web service or a SOP service, so it's like a procedure call. Right. So because this procedure call is actually is very uh, kind of uh, 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 yeah, so you can think of method invocation, right? So for example, you have two classes uh, working in the same process space. You can have something dot, 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 and then you invoke the method, right, work together. So now with the web service, whether it's SOP or RESTful, so it's like a remote, remote procedure call or remote method invocation. Your food web service, RESTful service is running over here. Your Android client is run over here, so they'll call, call, call your method, invoke your method remotely instead of locally. 
But just now we talk about middleware. So where the middleware comes to the picture is make your remote procedure call or remote method invocation as if it is a local call. So hide all of the details from the developer. Right? When it, right, glue, help them to glue the system together. Right? So this is just some metaphor uh, uh, help us to understand. So XML, so there are some chapters about some tests where we XML things. So I think we have talked quite a lot uh, using XML. And then in this module, we try to link with uh, your Android uh, application, where your manifest, where your layout. Uh, these are the good examples of XML put into place. Uh, these are more for configuration, but for us, it's a soft example to exchange, right? So XML, <coughs> okay, there's a question for you. So XML is a structured way of, uh, for the information. So XML can be, right? Right? So in your Android example, a lot of places is to store the information, your layout of your activity, the information about your, your whole application, like a manifest, uh, in the e e Eclipse, right? We also have web configurations, sort of these configurations is over there. So store and uh, just produce uh, information, right? Yeah, information. Uh, so XML can XML. So there is a blank over there, uh, yeah. so at, at the end of this module, right, so uh, let's pick out uh, what this uh, XML uh, is doing for us. XML can be used to store information, correct, right, like your Android things. And XML can be used, and there is another one, blank, in blank. Ah. Exchange, right? Exchange for me. For example, just now the stop request come to you, stop response come to us. And then in your REST for service, right, your class annotation, yeah, you can produce, uh, for example, either JSON or XML. You see? You can specify. Right? So if I, I produce XML, I pass to XML, pass, if I JSON, I can pass to JSON, right? Uh, depends on your request, what you, you need. If you use JSON, pass JSON, XML. Right? So, XML can be used to store and exchange right, the information. Right? Okay? So, these are the things. Right? Hmm. So, this is the layout. Right? So, attributes. Uh, namespace, right? Namespace. So in your Android, you have a lot of namespace over there, right? So here you have a namespace defined like this. So namespace is to uh, avoid name clash, right? Name clash. Name clash or name ambiguity. Because in XML, you can invent the text, right? or the attribute name, right, kind of things. But there's a possibility of a, a name a clash, a, a name a clash, or name ambiguity, ambiguity. Yeah. So this, uh, there, this is how XML uh, namespace and ambiguity, right? So this is the namespace come to the picture. So you can refer to your, you can refer to You can refer to your Android application or whatever things. Alright. So same thing, same meaning. Right. So. The tree structure also, 
right? And the the attribute value need to be put in the double quote, right? Double quote. The value need to be put in double quote. Schema, right? Because X, the, for example, the data in the table, you can, in the end, you can put it in the XML format or JSON format. Right? Let's say put it in the XML format. You have food ID, food name, rating, whether it's X, XML, JSON. Let's say in XML. Right? So the record can be put in the XML data. Right? Correct. Right? So when you define the table, you say, oh, this table got a table name, and they have a column one, blah, blah, column two, blah, blah, column three, and what's the data type for the food ID, what's the data type for food description, what's the data type for the rating. So this is a schema for the table, right? Similarly, when you bring the data to XML, XML also have a schema, also, to define what are the text, uh, food ID means what, uh, or food price means what, food rating, what's the data type. Uh, so this kind of things can be put in the schema, uh, also uh, put in the schema. <coughs> so these are the couple of slides in XML, right? Uh, so yeah, SOP we have is a kind of like XML also. Mm. Use XML. So how is the annotation come to the picture? WSDL will automatically generate for us. And there you have a stop come to the picture to help you to consume the web service. Right? So last time you remember the credit card, after you implement the web method, they will move to the client. You have WS import, whatever, get a WSDL. And then a couple of bunch of classes has been generated. So in your client, uh, let's just use a term called web service consumer, the client. When you call the web service, you don't have to construct the SOP request by yourself. So instead, the generated class called client stop will come to the picture. All right? Come to the picture. All right. <clears throat> so, and then uh, let me link a little bit uh, to this picture a little bit. So, is, is this one? Okay. Uh -huh. What are we talking about? What is this? Stop. Stop. Where is this? Stop? Where is this? Stop? Which slide I talk about? 30, 35, oh, so fast. 35. This stop, right? So I just add on this, uh, this, uh, this slide here. Right? Mm. Yeah. This is stuck over here. So in other words, <coughs> you publish, uh, so you are, uh, let's say, back to the credit card web service you have created, this web service provider, they have a WSDO also, everything. So you move to the client, web service consumer. So at that time it's a console, right? Uh, so you need, you want to call this web service, you need to you use HTTP, HTTP post, and prepare the SOP message inside the HTTP body, and then send over. When the SOP re response comes back to us, we need to, to take a look at the passing the a XML. But actually, we, we, all of this you don't have to do in your web service client. All of this job is done by the stop generated. So you are calling the method through this stop which is generated by the WS import. And then, from this perspective, in your 
assignment one, right? You have a web service client uh, console application to call the web service, uh, which is uh, credit card since, right? So it seems that this it, it is remote procedure call, but actually look like a local call. Why? Because in your web service client, you are only blah blah dot blah blah dot of this stuff, as if you are calling this stuff, right? As if it's a local call. Behind the scenes, the stuff will talk to HTTP, make use of the network, the SOP come go, SOP through HTTP, and then SOP response come back to us, the stuff give the result to you. Right? The stuff give the result to you. So, in this case, remote procedure call with the help of the stuff generated from the client perspective, looks like a local call. Local call, instead of remote call. Right. So there's one part which is missing. At the web service side, right, they also have something similar to stuff, which you will talk to your web service code, class code over here. Right. That's why your web service code, uh, validation credit card, you never see SOP request, you never see HTTP request, right? you just get a, like a normal method of credit card is a stream passed to me. But actually it comes from the SOP request. Right? So why? Also there is a stop working at the server side. So this part uh, we haven't discovered uh, or explained in more detail, so it will not be tested, but it's good to know there is something over there also. That's why when you implement SOP service or RESTful service, uh, is this the SOP, right? They, you, you don't see the, the SOP at all. All right? Just use annotation to indicate this public method will invoke uh, over the web can be called remotely through the internet in this case, right? Uh, so I hope you can see these two slides put together. Okay, so... Okay. So this is a blank, is it? Nothing. Is it? Last thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. No more. Okay. So, so they have a uh, rest is stateless. Okay. Right. So, I think I put some of the stuff uh, talk about uh, uh, the restless. So, collection of web resources and identified by URI. So, <coughs> Uh, I put a link to practical tag ABC uh, because at the end of the step by step there's some there's a one table over there to summarize this part right so in your case is food uh, or tools this is refer this is a resource right can access through the URI to different methods right either you want to get the food you want to update the food so the post is to create so <coughs> Uh, because of the error, uh, I, 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 I have changed the practical tag ABC a little bit. At the end of the these slides, right? So, because uh, URI, right? So, this is, this is what they designed. This is what I follow this to design, right? So, the put, right? Don't care. Right, so I, I, I put a better version, it's kind of uh, cover my mistake a little bit. <laughs> right. Instead of a correct version or wrong version, it's just better. So I put this guy, uh, you need to change this method to post to create uh, the user, is it? Create the user. Put to modify the user. Right. So this is user ID. User ID. But your assignment, you, your structure of this API uh, can be different. Right? But as an as a assignment requirement, uh, no, it seems that no one asks you to use put delete options and post over there. Only get. So if you implement other methods, uh, this, this is extra stuff. Yeah, but for teaching purpose, uh, we, we need to cover. Right? Need to cover. At, at, at least you know how to do it, right? But this is, uh, unfortunately, we teach you wrong thing, so I need to correct, 
correct my mistake again, right? But I leave this uh, over there, so uh, better version, okay? <laughs> better version, <laughs> better version. <laughs> yeah. So this is the resource, right? So this, I think, uh, I think this should be the starting points for us to work on our assignment or the project. This should be the starting points. This is starting. So we are not following the start, starting points. We are rushed for the assignment, right? So I think this is the starting points. Okay. So resource. Uh, so these are the okay. Uh, great, 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 plus great. So these are the comparison about these two, right? So if you want to know more about H G plus there, so this is a very good resource explained by this professor, right? Yeah. So, mm. yeah, very, very good. So I leave to you to take a look. Uh, if necessary, right? <coughs> so uh, these are the things uh, explain how uh, XML JSON can be uh, converted to map to each other uh, sort of things. Right? So I think we cover in quite detail uh, uh, this part. So this is another example, right? Mm. Okay, so let's take a look at this post. Post. So, <clears throat> so some of the things uh, there is a uh, uh, on the cloud, right? So they have some service over there, right? One of the service is push service. Uh, you can push some push, push, push. push. Where is it? Uh, is uh, so it's uh, provided by the cloud provider uh, by IBM. So they they are they, they call Blue Mix. Uh, Blue Mix a lot of service over there. I think the majority of the service is similar to the service you have created over there. Uh, not at the blah blah sl <coughs> slash slash uh, food or slash tools. It's very similar to this. It's just different type of resource. It's not food, not tools. Yeah, but in this case, it's a push service, <coughs> right? So, if you want to put the message, put the push the message over there, right? So this is the message. You take a look. If you want to send a message, right? In other words, actually, it's great, right? So they are using post. Delete the message. The URL more or less is like this, right? And this is get. Yeah. So there's a service over there. So the two ends, someone is pushing over there, someone is pulling the message over there, but you really don't care about the message service itself. Uh, you don't have to care about the scalability, especially. So it's like you pay more, you get more. Or you, you, yeah, you, can, you, you use more, you pay more. Use less, you pay less. And then you say, I unsubscribe. Then you say, I unsubscribe. Right? So this is a kind of cloud model. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's similar to the utility model. Utility. They, sometimes they call it utility model. Right? So like you turn on the tap, you need more water. This resource, you pay more. And then one day you say, I don't need. Then you don't need. You, 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 you unsubscribe. And one day you go to party at home, a lot of people come, you need most things, then you turn on the tap right, for a longer time, right, and then you can stop. Right, party is over, then you don't have to worry about what happened to all of the waters. Stop already. So, so the case for the service. So you will notice when you put the message, create a message, is a post, the message. So this is a URL, slash apps, slash, this is a template ID, right, and the messages. Right? Right. Yeah. So you can take a look at the details, for example. So these are the things in the post. This is a URI, right? Then this is put the this is the response, so whatever things. Right? The response content type can be 
now this uh, the XML get less. So in, in some in this case only JSON will will be in the response pass back to us, All right? So you put the message over there. Okay. So this is the API. So if you want to use this, really it's a black box. <laughs> now you are consume, you create your web service, you are consume your own web service. We don't feel like it's a black box, right? But it is a black box. Beside this, we, we don't know, right? So this is a Blue Mix service. Another service is the Amazon Cloud service, right? They have a lot of service over there. You can explore. In this example, they have a bucket, so it's a storage service. In other words, you can put things into the bucket, and then you can get the things from the bucket, and then you can do this. So let's take a look in this bucket resource URI, in this resource called bucket, right? This resource, if I put, want to put things to the bucket, right? So what method we should use when we in this uh, API, right? So if you click this link, it will bring you to this API documentation. Uh, so this API documentation is very clear, right? So when you say put, 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 right? So this is HTTP, this is the host, right? And then REST API, yeah. <laughs> so this is different, okay? Right? So you see, in this API, Amazon, right? We use put operation to create a resource, not food, uh, not movie, right? Or not tools. It's a bucket, like a bucket. So you can store things over there. Okay? They are using this guy, put. Okay. Yeah. So if they say put, but you may, when you call, you must put put. <laughs> right? You cannot put post, right? So. This little confusing, right? Okay. Mm. So these are the examples over there, right? Mm. So you can delete a bucket also. So this is no confusion over there. So this is to delete the bucket. bucket, bucket. So this is to delete the bucket. So at this stage, right, we, I think we just uh, follow this path. Just be aware that because in the end, right, we need to follow whatever API the, the service provider is saying. Right, and then our the consumer side, so it's kind of uh, change accordingly, right? According. Okay, any other questions? So basically, this is like that. And then the assignment tool, when you work on this, actually you are preparing for one question. Uh, I cannot remember the question. The question will be like this. So, similar to your REST for service, you are working on the food or the tools. They will show you this, uh, this class with proper annotation, similar to your tools, similar to your food. You are using Java, is it? Uh, using Java, Java class, basically Java class, right? So, they will show you a list of this. Okay. And now, the question is, so don't worry, no need to write the code for, for in the test. So with this, show you this uh, Java class with annotation, you need Jersey to expose the public method to the web, all right? 
the coding is there. And then the question say, oh, all right, so I go to browser, all right, I, in the browser URL, I type this, so you will see the pub, right, the pub, what they are requesting. And since they are using the browser, they are not using browser anything at all, or it's, it, it says, right, so it's, the HTTP method is get, it's only get, so in the browser, right, so you watch this URI, so what is the URI, they will be given slash slash something, whether they got a query string over there, right, so it kind of says, and then they ask you, okay, if this, uh, and then what the user can see, all right, so this will not invoke any methods you expose with annotation called put, delete, or sort of says definitely is get, because the only in the browser, they never use any plugin for the browser to test your RESTful service. So the HTTP method come from the browser is get. Okay, this is one thing. So you just look for the Java class, right, uh, is with, with the water. Get, right? The method called at get, is it? Yeah, yeah, this is at, at, at get. And then look at the URI to what URI uh, you are looking for to matching exactly what is the method, right? You are invoking. You are invoking. <coughs> and uh, so this is one, the URI, the method. Get. And then you, if the request, of course in the reality the request may, may, may come from the browser, may not come from the browser, right? May come from your web application, you have jQuery to call, Android or whatever, so you can yeah, have a lot of methods you can set where they get or some other method. But however, the browser context, right, is only get, right? And then you look at the URI, so hopefully you can map to the particular methods they are invoking. Then they ask you, hey, what is the output? Uh, what the user will see in this browser? Right? In this browser. So you will be able to answer this question. Uh, so when you work on the assignment, so this question is settled already. I think four structured questions. This is one already. So you work on the assignment, you play testing. You Majority of you, you are using browser to te test. So you will know in this Java class, with certain annotation, so which method, right, will be invoked, and then you will figure out what is the output uh, the, the user sitting in front of the browser will, will be able to see, right? Right? Okay. Mm. Uh, one thing, if the requests are coming from browser, right, in the header, in the HTTP header, in the HTTP header, they, they, what, 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 what is the header? I forgot. There is a header called accept. Accept something. Accept what? So in other words, when I send a request to you, I tell you I accept HTML, <laughs> for example, or accept something. So when you receive this, this my request, right? So you, 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 for example, in your website, you have a choice, give me HTML or give me plain text, well, what, what produce, right? You, you, you can, you can de decide. So, then you can based on the header fields in the, in the, in my request. Right? Header fields. So, if the request come from browser, right, that means the, the URI, this is their use HTTP get. Right? One thing. And then uh, you look at the U URI over there, you will be able to figure out the path, right? Uh, then you will be able to figure out what method. If the question is set a little bit difficult, right? So you end up, you have two. That means you go to Java class, you will notice the two methods over there uh, respond to the same resource, same method. You see, cannot be, right? Can it be? Uh, because you see, uh, the, there's a very, I think a lot of us have encountered this uh, so-called uh, problem, right, in our assignment. 
So it's like uh, think, uh, uh, ambiguous resource. So when the request comes to, to us, so in your case, you have produce annotation at the job method, public, blah, 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 this is. So two methods, produce and consume, exactly the same mind types, and therefore their invocation as a resource method will always fail. So it's kind of not very sure which one. So you have, so in other words, you cannot have two methods, you see, uh, respond to the same path, same method. Is that possible? Okay, the question is, is that possible on your Java class for this RESTful service? You have two methods, public methods, response to same resource, URI, same resource, half, is that half is the same, method is the same. By default, they know, right? But you look at this error message, looks like possible. Hmm? Yeah. 35, yeah? Yeah. So you look at this error message, you will notice it's possible. If they produce or consume different mind type, so in other words, in the Java class, right? Same, same Java class. Huh? Path is these two methods, right? Method one, method two. Same path, same method. Okay, it's okay. If they consume or produce different mind type. So, they, yeah, good question. So that means, what is the mind type? Mind, now here, here they, they, because in the end it's HTTP. HTTP only talk about mind types, right? So, what are the mind types? So, uh, let's back to, so you refer to practical five. Actually, I have included practical five in this practical pair ABC also. You can take another look. I think this could be a very difficult question already. They may not ask you this question. May or may not. Right? So I think something like uh, uh, when we come to the uh, when we come to the web service Hello World, I think. Yeah, you see over here. Yeah. These couple of methods. The same same path because you never say any path. You know, the path is like the class path, right? In the same path. It's about the same method. And then they ask you, I'm in the browser. I type this blah blah path. You know the method is get. Okay? Same path, same method. So in the end, they ask you in the browser, right? What? you are going to see, the user is going to see. So you end up all possible, right? So actually it's no, because in the browser, the header, HTTP request come to you, the header part, there is accept what MIME types they accept. So by default, if we don't set, because HTTP request now is not constructed by your mobile uh, Android things, it's not by your jQuery things, is HTTP request is constructed automatically by the browser after you hit the URL enter key. So by the, in this case, the default, right, I think it's kind of text. <laughs> Can you test, right? <laughs> Can you go back home, test the, this guy? You go to the browser, you go to this uh, resource over there, you see what will be returned, right? Or take a shortcut, what is the uh, accept type for the browser? Default, default HTTP type, you say? Default HTTP, my, 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 you see? My, our my, my, my type, yeah. 
uh, is this, they say is this text HTML. They say is text HTML. So if you text HTML, right, then then they will return this to the browser. So, so you go to the browser, take a look. So in this case, so this could be a diff, so-called difficult question. By right, you based on the URL path, you will know path plus the method, right? You will know which method will be invoked, then you will tell the user what will be this. Uh, the more, diff, more, more difficult one, there will be, you will find out two, right? And then, based on the request, the HTTP request, the accept my type, right? And then, default. So, I'm not very sure at, at this stage uh, what is the... Should it be, should it be this, right? Ah, HTML, right? And yeah, in the, we were talking about HTTP is defined <laughs> for HTML, right? So, yeah, could it be, but question mark, put a question mark over there, right, uh, so, but I'm not very sure this so-called at this will, will be this question, but if this question, you will based on, instead of two factors, URI path, right, and uh, method which you get, you can have another criteria to, to de- for you to decide in case you uh, end up two methods. So this is a que- or one question. And some questions about SOA, WSDL, uh, kind of things. Uh, we, have, uh, we have more than enough questions covered already. But in the end, actually, I haven't answered this question. We follow this. But if you go to the Amazon, they, they create a lot of rest for service over there. Uh, is otherwise. All right, so we don't talk about that anymore. But you just, when, whenever we consume the web service, Right, so it's, it's good to go to their website to take a look at their API, right? Uh, they will change accordingly, right? But at this moment, we just follow this, right? So the RESTful is uh, kind of work, right? So different people talk about different things, right? So next week, I will tell you, is there any question specific to ask you, right? So what is the right answer? So at this stage, so... If, if I'm marking, right, so both of them are correct, right? <laughs> right. Uh, both of them are correct. So the best answer, I think, at this stage, looks like, because I, I, I look up many resources already, uh, so, yeah, so we, 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 but at least you should choose one, right? <laughs> you, you, you choose one, right? Yeah, you choose one, you choose one. Okay. Okay, so, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, so this is a for loop, you know, right, it's a for loop, <laughs> it's just a for loop, right, uh, yeah,